be beaming, I be booming down that block. Down that block. Everywhere you go, you know they know I'm hot. What's the deal, my good people? Welcome back to the channel. Happy Tuesday. I hope you all are doing well. If this is your first time here, I want to welcome you. Pull up a seat. I hope you enjoy the content. And before we get into this food, I want to ask that you like, comment, share, subscribe, and go ahead and tap that bell while you're at it so you're notified anytime I drop a brand new video, go live, or schedule a premiere. All right, y'all. So today, keeping things pretty simple. I got a very simple seafood boil. I got some snow crab, I got some mussels, and I got some boiled eggs, and I got a sauce that I made, y'all, and I'm gonna let y'all know exactly what's in it. I remembered to write it down this time. <laughs> so yeah, keeping things simple, y'all. Very, very easy, simple. Woo, sliding, hold on now. Very simple seafood boil, y'all. Here go the sauce, let me give y'all some sauce. I'm gonna let you know what's in it. I tried some different stuff today and it actually turned out pretty good. So I'm gonna tell you in a minute what's in there. Let's go for an egg first. I mean, cause why not? All right. Ooh. Mm. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. I forgot my lemon and that's fine. for this egg one more time though oh that's good mm, we got them onions you see the onion on there mm. Mm -hmm. yes mm. all right so let me tell you what's in here so this is butter garlic i got some sauteed onions in here i have i squeezed an entire orange inside of here i got some brown sugar barbecue rub onion powder, and Cajun lemon pepper. That's everything that's inside of here, and it's good. It's delicious. Now, let me show this real quick. Y'all know my cousin got a seasoning. Y'all know I'll be talking about it. She just dropped her third seasoning, and I'm super proud of her, and it's really, really good. Brown sugar baby barbecue rub. That's what I use in this sauce, y'all. So, I'm going to drop the link below if y'all want to check it out. It's really good. I love it. So, I have that in here, and it really helped um, give me some sweetness that I was looking for in here yeah so what's up y'all man i missed y'all i know it's been a while y'all i know it's been a while i know i know it has been i missed y'all i really did last week was just busy you know y'all see i got my hat on again I went to Arizona to work on my documentary, y'all, and that heat swept my hair out. So, back to the hat. Mm. Oh, I definitely left some meat in there. Um. Ooh, glad that came right on out. Let me give y'all some, some snow crab. I'm assuming that y'all might want some. Mm. This is exactly what I needed. That want a muscle? That probably do. Probably do, why not? Mm, mm, mm. Y'all wanna give a shout out to Miss Bliss? If y'all don't know Miss Bliss, that's whose song is on the intro. We'll be beaming and booming down the block. Shout out to her because she started her YouTube channel. Well, she already had a channel, but she's gonna start vlogging, y'all. And she's been going live. So shout out to her. I'm actually going to share her first vlog on the community tab, but I'm going to also include the link below. So y'all go show her some love. I promise you'll be thoroughly entertained. For real. So I'm going to make sure I drop that and y'all go check her out. I am doing a story time. I'm going to get to a story time in just a minute. Yeah. 
I'm gonna tell y'all about that one time when I played basketball. I'm gonna tell y'all a nice little story about uh, <laughs> my basketball experience when I played in high school. Well, Tinesi is all through the story, so I know she ain't in the video. Y'all been asking about her, but she is in the story time, y'all. So. Um, I know some folks seen it and some didn't, but I dropped a vlog yesterday on Rhonda's Red Vlogs where I reviewed PD Shades. The PD Shades is a company that's owned by Chrissy P. Y'all, so I had to bring the shades to the video because I want y'all to see them because I love them that much. I brought the shades here real quick so y'all can see them. So let's take a shade break. Y'all, these are some unisex glasses. Tell me what y'all think. Y'all see the yellow lens on them? I love these glasses. I wore them all day around the house yesterday. For real. I love these glasses. I really, really do. So, these are some yellow lens sunglasses. Then I got the big boys. These are the big, bold, futuristic looking ones. Wow. You know what I'm saying? When I go somewhere special, I will wear these. So... I just wanted to show y'all these glasses because I really do love each. I love both pairs. I really do for different reasons. And I just want y'all to tell you know to tell y'all. Check out pdshades.com. I'm gonna include their information below too. Um, if you enter sauce, if you check out, you know, because first of all, their glasses are super affordable, like for real. And they're great quality. So you can get 10% off of their already affordable price by entering sauce when you check out. So I just want to share with y'all. You know what I'm saying? It's summertime. I know we're not traveling and moving around like we probably are used to, but you know what I'm saying? When you go out, go to the grocery store, if you're in your backyard, go and get in your pool, protect your eyes. So, I know I'm getting me some more, for sure. started with the story time so I'll definitely let y'all know that I played basketball in high school I've mentioned that I know I've said that but I don't think I've gone into detail about it so I, I didn't play basketball my whole life I've been a basketball fan since I was like five or six diehard Laker fan since I was like five or six years old and I never played organized sports though I just never did but when I was in high school, I kind of got inspired because my boyfriend, yes, I had a boyfriend in high school. <laughs> I even got a whole story talking about him. What happened to that boy, if you're interested? Um, he played basketball, and so did a couple other people that I knew. So I was like, you know what? Maybe I should give basketball a try. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't sure if I had the coordination or anything like that, y'all. So I just went for it. So I went ahead and I tried out. I remember, you know, leading up to it, you know, I practiced all the time. I practiced all the time. Because I wasn't sure, you know what I'm saying, because I'd never played organized ball before. Because it's one thing to watch the sport, but actually playing it is whole different. So I remember, you know what I'm saying, um, practicing, preparing for tryouts. And, y'all, I made the varsity team when I tried out. So my 11th grade year, I was on the team, but I didn't really play because I had a foot injury. So I was out the whole season. So I really only played like my senior year. I only played like my senior year. And um, I remember me and this other girl, we were the captains on the team. And, um, you know, our season started off okay. It started off okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, we were doing okay as a team. You know what I'm saying? We were kind of struggling. We had just came from a, a winning season. I mean, we did really, really well in the playoffs, and we had lost our seniors. So we had a young team, and we had a lot of things we had to figure out. And now, mind you, I'm really a first-time player, so I had my own things or whatever. And we kind of were getting into a rhythm. We were okay. We weren't horrible, but we were okay. But that's to be expected. You got to figure out your chemistry on any team, right? And I remember 
my mom really couldn't, my dad couldn't come to my games because he worked graveyard. And then my mom, she would only come to the home games and not the away games. And I remember, I don't know what changed, but eventually mom started showing up to all the games, y'all. And she was super involved. She became like a team mom out of nowhere. And it was dope. Like we could always depend on our moms to be at the games with us. You know what I'm saying? Have snacks. Um, you know, doing stuff for us during the game, making sure we had our water and our Gatorade and stuff. Like they, they the moms just took care of the team. And the next thing I know, the moms show up with t shirts with that match our uniforms. So we're like, what what y'all doing? Like, you know, but it was just they were just so proud. And I remember y'all to the point where my mom had a people had like different names on the back of their shirt. Whether it was their, you know, their last name, you know. My mom instead of you know putting our last name on the shirt, she put Mama Dog on the back of her shirt. I don't know, I'll never forget that. So everybody on the team would call me, what's up, Mama Dog? What's up, Mama Dog? How you doing? That's how they would greet her. And she had my basketball number on her shirt. And my senior year, my basketball number was 44. And, you know, we was having a pretty decent season. You know what I'm saying? Kind of up and down, winning, losing, whatever. Then we hit like this real rough patch, y'all. I mean, it was rough. We weren't talking to each other on the floor. We weren't talking during timeouts. We just had a really, really, really bad disconnect. We really did. And when your team can't get it together like that, it affects the way that you perform. You know what I'm saying? And we were losing. We were on a losing streak. We really were. And it's frustrating. I mean, the thing about it is, I know I'm not, we're not going to win every game. I got that part. But it's frustrating when people aren't giving their all. And you're not working as a team. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's frustrating. So, like, it's fine if we lose as a team. But people out here doing what they want to do. And, you know, taking shots. And doing all kind of stuff. And playing one-on-one. -on -one, like, that ain't cool. Right? So, we just had a major disconnect. So, I know I used to complain. I know my mama got tired of hearing me complain. And it was just frustrating, y'all. Because, you know... I don't even think at this point, we were probably maybe at the halfway point of the season. Um, it's really hard thinking, like, trying to think, like, how are we going to make it through the rest of the season? You know what I'm saying? Like, we can't even depend on each other. We don't trust each other. We're not talking to each other. Like, everything is frustrating. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like it got, I don't know. It got, I feel like it got bad. It got bad. Because, you know what I'm saying? When you see your teammates, even if y'all don't hang out like that also, out, off the court, you know, y'all respect each other. When y'all see each other in passing or at lunch. And I don't know. Things just got real shaky. They did. So I remember the moms being like, look, you guys, we're going to take you guys out to go bowling. Y'all need to do uh, like y'all need to do something together as a team. And we're going bowling. So we like bowling. I don't want to go bowling with them. I ain't trying to hang out with y'all like that. Like, I'm trying to go ahead and play these games, get through this season. You know what I'm saying? People was focusing on their own personal stats. Like, people just did not care, right? So, I was like, I do not want to go bowling. It was like on, like on a Friday night or something like that. So, my mom was like, Rhonda, you got to come. You got to go bowling. So, I'm like, all right, fine, whatever. So, we go bowling. Everybody's body language is horrible. We dragging in. We are not interested. You could feel the energy. You could look at us and see that we was disconnected, right? So, we had like two or three lanes. Um, you know, everybody like pretty much, and I'm not saying we're not talking at all. A couple people kind of like clicked up talking or whatever. You know, we talking to our moms and whatever, right? People, I think some sim people's like siblings were there. Some, you know, whatever family is there. So we kind of just hanging out, right? So We're like, you know, kind of breaking the ice a little bit. We kind of enjoying ourselves, you know, saying, kind of coming around, laughing, whatever. And we look up, y'all, and it's a guy walking towards us because we like at the we at the end of the bowling alley, and there's a guy, and that bowling alley is not crowded. So we're at the end, and we're like, he, this guy's walking to us, and he's comes closer and closer and closer. We can see his face better, you know, better as he approaches. We're like, is that Theo? And when we say Theo, 
Theo was on 92.3 The Beef. Anybody from LA? He was also in Waiting to Excel. Y'all don't know if y'all remember Theo or not, but Theo was a big, big deal in LA. A huge deal in LA on the radio in the 90s. And we're like, is that Theo? And they're like, that is Theo. And we're like, is he coming over here? Like, he's, he keeps on walking towards us. So he comes over. And we going crazy, y'all. He comes over. We approach him. He's really approachable and friendly. He's smiling. Like, he's just, like, so welcoming and warm. You know what I'm saying? Like, not big-headed or nothing. So we're like, what are you doing here, you know? And he's like, hey, what's up? I came to see y'all. We're like, you came to see us? He was like, yeah. I came to see y'all, see what's up with y'all, see what's going on, you know? And then he just really sat down and he spent some time with us, too. He was there for a while. He probably was there for like an hour or two. Honestly. And the crazy part is, y'all, Theo came from like a really far distance to come to the bowling alley. Like, you know what I'm saying? He was really big about doing stuff in the community or you hear that on the radio. But him driving out there to us like that, you could tell that he was about the community because he drove far. I mean, I'm talking like 60 miles far to come to us one way. So, um, he just sat and just showed us some love, was telling us how important it is to remain positive, talked about teamwork and how that's the only way you can get ahead. Like, just really influencing us the right way to help us fix our disconnect. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, it felt like a movie because we all started looking at each other like, yeah, teamwork. Like, it, we just, we got the message. We got it loud and clear. And that was a great way to use his influence back then. That was so long ago for him to talk to us like that and for us get the, to get the message. And honestly, after that, we got it together. We got back to, you know, running the offense, talking to each other on the floor, looking out for each other, protecting each other, communicating, you know what I'm saying, before games, after games, during timeouts, everything went back in, you know, the way to the way that it should, how a team is supposed to operate. <clears throat> and I'll say, just shout out to the moms. Our team moms, Literally reached out to 92.3 to beat, left a bunch of messages for Theo, left off, kept on leaving messages. He had finally got back and he said, yeah, that was it. He said that he'd be down to do it. Just had to pick a day and that was it. So that really showed me a lot about, um, about teamwork and you know how things can there can be a disconnect, but there's also a way that if everybody is willing, there is a way to get back on track. You know what I'm saying? So whether that's on a team, as it relates to sports or at work or a relationship, like there is a way to get things back on track. There's, you know, disconnects happen, things fall apart, but it's up to the people that are involved to want to fix it. You know what I'm saying? Like if everybody, woo, if everybody is willing to put their stuff aside, there is absolutely a way to get back to a place of, just being on the same page, you know? So, you know, it, it was an important message then, but it's always something that kind of stuck with me, you know, that there's absolutely way to, to get things back on track when things kind of feel like they're falling apart, but you're not in a good place, you know what I mean? So that's that one time when I played basketball. And I let me say this too real quick before I end, that <laughs> I think about what kind of player I was, y'all. I was a really big Dennis Rodman and Charles Barkley fan. And I played just like them. You know, I am I wasn't the tallest. You know, I played power forward. I'm only 5'5". Five five, but I'm strong and I understand the game. I understand that when the ball goes up, I expect it not to go in. So I know how to position my body to get a rebound. Y'all, I hustle. I hustle very hard every single game. And I could think about <laughs> a couple of the games when, when, um, I would fall on the ground. I mean, fall hard, you know what I'm saying? To the point where they got to stop the game and make sure I'm okay and all of that. And my mama just coming off them stands, y'all. Like, I remember one time my dad had to stop her from coming down there. Like, mama, you cannot come on the court like that. But y'all know my mama. I don't know how she is. She love her. She love her baby, okay? And, you know, just having to be a parent on the sidelines, making sure that your child is okay. But I miss basketball. I really, really do. That was a great time. Even though I didn't play for a long period of time. I learned a lot by playing basketball. I really did in terms of just like leadership and like teamwork and all of that. I learned a lot of valuable things that I could still apply to my life now, you know? So that's my story, y'all.
That one time I played basketball. I'm making a mess over here, okay? <coughs> All right, so I'm about to go ahead and wrap this video up. I promise to be back on Thursday. I promise, I promise, I promise. Uh, probably with another story time. Or if not, I may have Auntie Nisi with me to do a challenge. Because it's about that time. We about due for a challenge. So, I appreciate y'all very much. Um, links below for everything that I mentioned earlier. And um, that's it. Make the best of the day. And more importantly, be good to yourself. Peace. I be beaming, I be booming down that block. Down that block. Everywhere you go, you know they know I'm hot.